made beautiful, beautiful location for sure. Oh, here, dramatic music. I also hear an SMG, is that an SMG heat sink? It was, that is one of the weapons Looks or one like of the weapon mods clear. we are currently Let's using. Let's get inside. It appears the temple has been barricaded. Okay. Looks like there may be a way in if we hack that. Just take a quick look around. Okay, let's do it. Let me take a look. It's military grade encryption. I think I can override it. Do religion and military always mix among Asari? <laughs> no, this is unusual, especially since few still follow the Afame doctrine. Mm -hmm. Okay, looks like we're in. Did we save after that encounter? Why don't we save? Take a look around. Maybe one of these artifacts is what we're looking for. Okay, investigate the artifacts. It looks like we are here. I also think we did level up in a recent encounter, so that means we do have enough points now to further upgrade Shockwave. So, let's just make sure. This is the one, I believe, rank 4 radius that is bugged, where if you take this, it makes it so that you can hit with a single Shockwave and then from there on out, Shockwave will forever be bugged and not be able to hit anything at all. So it becomes a completely useless skill, not even exaggerating in the least. So here though, if we go further, we can increase the range from 10 meters to 15 meters. For the most part, I think Shockwave, we're not really looking for this to be a long range ability. It's more so if our opponents are just hanging out behind cover or on the other side of a wall, Shockwave can go through all that stuff. So, I mean, yes, to a certain extent, having additional range means you can do that from a greater distance, but I don't really think that's the primary concern as much as force and damage of biotic detonations. Now, that is not a generic direct damage upgrade. That is specifically from detonating uh, skills with Shockwave, biotic skills with Shockwave. So technically speaking, Technically speaking, priming with warp with the abilities that we've taken here, including detonate, which increases the damage of biotic detonations. Actually, is that any type of detonation? Well, I mean, warp primes for biotic detonation. So in this case, prime for biotic detonation and get 50% extra damage there. Expose increases the power damage taken, or the amount of power damage that an enemy takes by 15%. So that's even more damage taken. And then piercing here, weakening armored targets by another 25%. So basically super debuffs on warp and super priming for biotic combos and then using shockwave with this detonate ability and then fully upgrading it for, uh, actually none of these give direct damage, but the more highly upgraded a skill is, the more powerful the biotic combo or whatever type of combo it is uh, is so detonate here and then just throwing in a, a rank six ability for the sake of getting this up to rank six is the highest possible damage biotic combo uh not including grenades grenades might technically be higher but those are obviously a little bit of a different story since there's a finite number of those that you can throw so if you were trying to make Shockwave your primary source of biotic damage, then this is definitely the way you'd want to go. It, for the most part, isn't, but still, it's pretty nice combo damage, so I think we'll take it. Okay, we certainly don't have enough points remaining to take one of these rank 6 upgrades. Could upgrade pull into rank 2, but that's probably still not really needed. So Shepard is really close to having all the skill points that we are looking to have at this stage. Javik, 
Similarly, could upgrade pole, but that's not so meaningful. Vengeful Ancient, we don't have the points to fully upgrade this right now. Liara. Oh, you're so close. You're so close! You're oh so close. Beginning bubble stasis. That's what we really want, but you need one more <laughs> skill point to do it. So we need one more level to make it happen. Sadly. We could upgrade your pure biotic to give you the additional duration and force for your biotic abilities. Which is obviously great. It's nice. However, spending five points here means we further delay how long it takes us to get the stasis bubble, which is an ability that we've been trying to get for oh so long, so I think we might just deal with not spending these points in the short term in order to get stasis bubble as quickly as possible from here on out. Okay, I think that's what we do. So we'll save after that. Okay, so now, now we're here. Now we're here in the Asari Monastery. No, not mon the, the museum, I should say. Monastery, been there, done that. Met some banshees, moved on. But what is this shield? Is this what we're looking for? What's this? The goddess of Fiend's shield. Legends say she used it to protect Thessia when the heavens grew angry. Our ancestors were probably misinterpreting a meteor shower. It was an asteroid strike. We deflected it. You mean the Protheans? But that would imply a fame. Was real. Is not what you believe her to be. And not what you believe Just her to be. Just keep looking. Okay. So perhaps other reason to bring Javik, he might be able to give us a little more insights about these things. If we ask about this again, do we have anything else? I don't think that's the artifact. Okay. Fair enough. What about this? Ooh. Very cool looking sword. Could this be the artifact? I don't think so. It's the goddess of fame's sword. Myths say she wielded it against the jealous gods who threatened our ancestors. They were a race called the Order for us. Thessia had vast resources. We protected you from them. Are you actually suggesting that the Protheans intervened in our past? It's more than a suggestion. <laughs> I find it strange your scientists would abandon their own planet. They wouldn't. So it sounds like perhaps numerous of the Asari myths about gods and goddesses were actually based on true events, yes, but true events that the Protheans were the ones behind, not some divine intervention. That's a fame sword, not our artifact. Okay. Is there something over here as well? A manuscript. What about this one? A page from one of our earliest religious texts, the Athame Codex. I doubt this is it. It describes Lucin, Athame's guide who taught our ancestors about the stars. Your species was deemed to have potential. Pity you didn't live up to it. Ooh, harsh. We looked at that one. A page from the Codex. Okay. Try to start on the exterior and work our way in. Also, a manuscript. Another page from the Codex. Not very useful. It talks about a theme's guide granting us the gift of biotics as a reward for worshipping her. That gift involved years of genetic research. I... Uh, this is almost too much to take. For something as important as this artifact, there should have been fail-safes. Wait, hold on. So are you saying that... Genetic research, presumably on the part of the Protheans in that case, did they genetically modify the Asari to increase their biotic potential? Or did they just observe and not really take a direct part in it at all? It's the Athame Codex I mentioned. Okay. So that seems to be everything, at least on this side. See if there's anything on the far left side. That's the shield we looked at, right? There's the sword. Anything? Oh, another manuscript, perhaps? How about this? It's more from the Codex. Doesn't look promising. It describes how Athene taught our ancestors mathematics. Before that, you could only count as high as your toes. 
we took pity. <laughs> oh no. Oh. So perhaps the Protheans did, dare I say, coddle the Asari seemingly quite a bit. What do you know about this? A fragment from the Codex. It's not what we need. It describes how Athame's guide, Janiri, gave my people seeds. He taught them the season so they could grow crops. We didn't want you to starve. Also, the doing of the Protheans. Man. So all these things that we might have previously given credit directly to the Asari for having done and done successfully over the years, perhaps was in large part with the guidance or at times direct intervention of the Protheans. So that's all stuff out there. We have lots of seats. Is there anything else inside here? Additional rows of artifacts or, or not? Oh, yes. Hold on. There's this bust. It... Nah, surely not, right? Surely not. Could this be the artifact? I don't think so. That's a sculpture of Lucin, one of the famed servants who walked among my ancestors, bestowing knowledge. And you don't see the resemblance? <laughs> he was no servant of an imaginary goddess. He was Prothean. Yeah, there is a lot of resemblance. It is done. No, 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 Understood. Right, right there. As you wish. Understood. Oh. Just wanted him to stand right next to it without taking cover. We could see a, a perfect direct comparison. So there was one additional one. Part way through over there. Is there sort of a symmetrical one? Here-ish? Or was it exactly? It was over there. So you'd think that means, yep, there'd be one over here. Alright, guys. On it. Acknowledge. It, uh, it does also bear some resemblance. To a certain someone. Doesn't look useful. That's Janiri, a famous guide who brought enlightenment to Thessia long ago. He was no servant of an imaginary goddess. He was Prothean. Okay, that does appear to be the same, exactly the same description? I think. Okay. Anything else here? Starting to... These are the scientists. Oh. Perhaps they don't look very alive. I am noticing. So there's a statue, but before we check that out, let's see this mural. It does look... It's definitely supposed to be pictures of Asari, yes? This almost reminds me of ancient Egyptian art, stylistically at least. What are we looking at here? A primitive rendition of the goddess of fame. She's speaking to her ancient Asari followers. I don't think this is the artifact. Another one of your myths that somehow looks Prothean. What you're implying, it's staggering. We were here in the beginning, watching you grow. A theme was us. Okay, so yeah. Perhaps their gods and goddesses were not fictitious. We're not, well, I mean, we're not even gods or goddesses at all, though. They were Protheans all along. See if there's a similar mural on this side. It does appear to be so. Yeah, so these look a lot like Asari, yes. The goddess, however, is interesting in that yes, the the head looks Prothean like, but not purely right. Prothean like. In some ways, it's almost like a this looks like a hybrid body, like Half Asari, half Prothean. The Asari also have 
the the head tentacles, the hair tech. How did how did Joker refer to them? Which is uh, it's kind of similar to what's the Protheans have. But anyways, anyways. It's the goddess of fame again. You can still believe that, but it won't change the truth. Okay. Okay. All right. So, in that case, As I believe wish. we have now pretty much yes, located God. everything, artifact-wise, I believe. I hope so. Other than, front and center, this big, dramatic statue. It very much appears to be the centerpiece. Very much the centerpiece. So let's check it out. Their throats. What happened to them? They've been slit. The Reapers didn't do this. We're going to have to figure this out on our own. Who's that supposed to be? It's a fame. Her image became more like ours over time. You mean your ancestors tried to hide the truth? I'm still not willing to believe any of that's real. Then why does a fame speak Prothean? What do you mean? There is something here. I can sense it. In this temple? I admit it is strange this place has been so well preserved. Though a fame does have great historical significance, we once believed our gods were separate from the world, looking down on us. That sounds an awful lot like Reaper stuff. There is a universal energy. There's a Prothean beacon here. What? You're sure? It's not something you forget. But why hide it? The answer is obvious. Power and influence. Your people are holding the knowledge of my race for their own gain. That can't be. I can't believe my people would keep this a secret. Oh boy! So... Javik says all these fame myths and legends were truly the Protheans all along. And so what the Asari thought was divine intervention was actually just an entirely separate species that they totally forgot about that was helping them along the way on their way to success. Except we had thought that much of Prothean technology, Prothean ruins, Prothean artifacts had been destroyed in the 50,000 years since they were last on this planet. And whenever there was Prothean technology discovered, generally the protocol would be to identify it, research it, and share that information with the rest of the galaxy because that is usually the thing that leads to the most significant scientific advancements for the entire galaxy including but not limited to things like i don't know say like faster than light travel basically the foundation of the entire intergalactic civilizations that have built up so for the asari to have been holding on to this and hoarding it secretively and presumably using it to try to advance their technology more so than other species, certainly would explain how the Asari became so technologically advanced and became the pinnacle species of this cycle. So perhaps it does explain Asari's superiority. It does, however, if that is true, put a, you would think, pretty significant blemish on what has up to now seemed to have been the most honorable the most just overall the most successful species in the entire galaxy i mean what can we say the asari have done wrong sure at times they've been a little high and mighty and perhaps not been as helpful when it comes to assisting the other species as we might like but for the most part, they've been the bench, they've been the, they've been the bar. Everyone else has just been trying to catch up to the Asari first, the Citadel, and everything else. So, perhaps it is not a coincidence how they came to be in that position. A 
beacon like this could explain why Asari are so advanced. This temple is thousands of years old. Time enough to make serious progress. That yeah. doesn't make it true. Mm. You can't keep denying reality, Asari. Even a small amount of data would give your species an edge. Or are you insulted that your government didn't involve you? That's true, too. Liara, one of, if not the most, advanced Prothean researchers, also obviously in Asari, you would think if there was anyone who was brought in on this type of research project that she would be among that group. If not, she'd be at or near the top of the list. And yet, this is all seemingly coming as a complete surprise to Liara. So that's a bit of a slap in the face to her as well, I would have to think. In addition to just the the very striking move that her species made to deny this technology to the rest of the galaxy in the first place. The Mars ruins are where humanity got Mass Effect technology. And we learned a bit from the ruins of the Inusana, the race that came before us. It was our secret for centuries. So this is the thing. You would think the Asari ought to share that knowledge. Well, if it is true, the Asari should have shared this knowledge. We might not have been in this mess if they had. You don't know that, Shepard. We don't know what's going on here. I, I think we have a pretty good idea. To find out. The few records I can access talk about tapping into Prothean data streams, reconstructing matrices. Uh, what's that? None of which I see here. I do. The activation process has begun. By the goddess. Literally. Look around. There must be more of these connections. Incredible. The beacon seems to think you're Prothean, Shepard. It must be the cipher you got back on Pharos years ago. Or it could be the Prothean standing next to you. <laughs> that too. That too. Keep searching. There have to be more connections nearby. So again, further reasons to justify bringing Javik along with us. No connection here. The end of the war is near. Find what we need, finish the crucible, and vengeance is complete. Okay. I mean, I assumed it was going to be symmetrical, but perhaps not. Well, that's one of them. I'd say that one counts. Okay. So it looks like we're just going one artifact at a time and seeing what might trigger it. There is nothing useful here. Okay. Whoa, you okay, Liara? I'm not sure if we can read into any sort of pattern based on the where the lines are on the statue, You're perhaps. Another it's one. Gaining power. It's still not complete. This confirms the Asari owe your superiority to my people. And you owe the Mass Effect relays to the Reapers. How did that turn out? So you do bite. Good. We'll need that. <laughs> Cold. This isn't a connection. What about the sword? This doesn't appear to be a connection. We should keep searching. Yeah, so like from this side, it might be a little bit easier to tell if there's any sort of pattern to it. I'm not sure that there is, though. That certainly seems to have done something, though. The activation is complete. We can access the beacon now. Okay. So, if you wanted to read up on the artifacts and examine them, then your opportunity to do so is gone after you've activated this very, very large we Prothean beacon. beacon. We've seen some in the past, several in the past, always seemingly in order of magnitude, if not two orders of magnitude, smaller than this, though. Don't know if that's an indication of how powerful it is, but if so, then, man, he is sorry, we're really holding back. Not sharing this with the rest of the galaxy, hoarding it for themselves so that they could advance beyond what everyone else the had available to them. We need to hurry. This place isn't going to. Let's 
last very long. Obtaining chronological marker. Hold. Time scale established. Post Prothean cycle confirmed. One of our computers. Reaper presence detected. This galactic cycle has already reached its extinction terminus. Systems shutting down. No. Hold on. We need answers. To, to what, what question? question? The catalyst. We need to know what it is to finish the crucible. A memory of one of my people. I am called Vendetta, an advanced virtual construct of Patrick Van, overseer of the project you refer to as Crucible. He died fighting the Reapers in the Battle of Tranvia 9. Your remaining time is also at an end. We're all Protheans so grim. I mean, maybe, but most importantly, the Crucible itself. What, what can you tell us? The Crucible in your time? Why didn't the Protheans deploy it? We were sabotaged from within. A splinter group argued we should dominate the Reapers rather than destroy them. It fractured our order of battle. Later, we discovered the Separatists were indoctrinated. I always suspected as much. People that and tried to control the Reapers, but they were indoctrinated? Our studies of past ages led us to believe that time is cyclical. Many patterns repeat. Like the Reaper attacks. And hmm. the same peaks of evolution, the same valleys of dissolution. The same conflicts are expressed in every cycle, but in a different manner. The repetition is too prevalent to be merely chance. We assume the Reapers were responsible for the pattern. Perhaps. Though I believe the Reapers are only servants of the pattern. They are not its master. So who is the master? Unknown. Its presence is inferred rather than observed. The only certainty is its intention. Galactic annihilation. You now stand at that precipice. Ooh. Okay. Hints of... something bigger? Then the Reapers behind all this? I mean, they've certainly seemed to have been the vanguards of our destruction thus far, but I mean, we just need some way, any way, to try to combat them here, and it seems like the Crucible is our best answer. There's still hope for this cycle. We need to know what the catalyst is. Trillions of lives are at risk. Trillions of lives are always at risk. But if the Reapers have arrived to end your cycle, this discussion is too late. We can break the cycle. We found your plans for the Crucible. We're building it right now. The Crucible is not a protein design. It is the work of countless galactic cycles stretching back millions of years. Each what? cycle adds to it. Each improves upon it. Thus far, none have successfully defeated the Reapers with it. Okay. So it's even older and contributed... Even more species can have contributed to it than we would have ever imagined. Not just the Protheans, but give us a chance to be the ones to finally finish it. Then we'll be the first. Tell us what the catalyst is. Listen to the human. He can be trusted. I detect you are one of us. You are Prothean. The last. I am the final hope to avenge our people. Your mission was known to me. Do you believe this present cycle can deliver retribution? They have earned the right to try. Tell us what we need to know. Very well. If you have followed the plans for the Crucible, I will interface with your systems and assist with the Catalyst too. Indoctrinated presence detected. Activating security protocol. Uh-oh. What? Indoctrinated presence? Oh. Kai Lane. You. You killed the scientists. What do you want? Your attention. Someone would like to talk with you. Shepard. How did you find this place? The archives. Or did your shadow broker miss that one? Show yourself. I promise I won't miss. Stick to your talents, Dr. Dasani. You've helped uncover the key to subjugating the Reapers. Or destroying them. Subjugating? Damn it, Shepard. Destroying the Reapers gains us nothing. How about peace? They're just trying to control us. Think about it. If they wanted all organic life destroyed, they could do it. There would be nothing left. So what are you trying to say? What the hell are you talking about? I know them, Shepard. I know how they think. 
I think you've gotten a little too close to the enemy. It certainly sounds like it. No. I'm saying they've got it right. What? Why kill when you can control? Okay. Did we not just hear the Prothean VI tell us that during their cycle, they almost completed the Crucible. However, a subset of their scientists argued that instead of trying to destroy the Reapers, they should try to control the Reapers. The infighting between those two groups prevented them from completing the Crucible, only for them to later find out that those people who were arguing for controlling the Reapers were indoctrinated. Then, the VI says, history is doomed to repeat itself, Seemingly, the same conflicts always arise. It can't be a coincidence. And here we are, right here, right now, with the Elusive Man making that exact same argument. Here we are, saying that surely the only way to achieve peace is by destroying the Reapers. And he says, absolutely not. Why destroy when we can control? Well, based on what the Prothean B.I. just told us from the Prothean Cycle, if we are to learn from history and not repeat it, then we should say that surely the elusive man is wrong. And surely there must be some way to reason with him, right? How can he not see that siding with the Reapers is not the answer? If anything, if anything, everyone should be teaming up together against the Reapers, not fighting amongst each other. Because think about all the times we've gone on missions fighting Cerberus just as much, if not perhaps even more, than the Reapers. If Cerberus were sided with us against the Reapers instead, we'd be significantly, maybe even twice as strong as we currently are. You've been spending too much time with the enemy. They're dragging you over to their side, their way of thinking. No, I just see things differently. If you truly care about humanity, you'll stop fighting me. You'll join me. Don't ever question my intentions. I've sacrificed more for humanity than you'll ever know. And don't assume you know me. My methods for dealing with the Reapers are simply more refined than yours. Uh, elusive man. Elusive man. You may have a knack for pulling off what seems to be impossible, helping us to pull off what seemed to be a suicide mission, but... I'm afraid you've lost touch. You've forgotten everything you stood for. Cerberus was supposed to be humanity's sword, not a dagger in our back. Poetic, but as usual, you miss the point. The world is more gray than you care to admit. With the Prothean data in this beacon, I can end this conflict once and for all. You're either with me or against me. There's nothing gray about that. No, I suppose there isn't. Leng. The commander has something I need. Please relieve him of it. And then bring me the data. Understood. Okay. So, after a little chat with the elusive man, now we find ourselves, finally, having a little bit of a tussle here with one Mr. High Lang. So, uh... We've seen... Him in cutscenes do his thing a little bit. We know he has a sword, which he is currently wielding. And I believe we have also seen him use a hand pistol, hand cannon type of thing, kind of like we've seen phantoms use in the past. And so I think that's what we ought to expect here. He obviously has shields, which is unfortunate because as we've said previously, when we're using a full biotic team as we currently are, Shields are definitely the type of defenses that we are weakest against. So this, I don't like to see. But what can we do to him? We can still warp him. And warping him may not deal a ton of damage, but it will still debuff him and prime him for some combos. I actually got some renegade points for that. I'm not entirely sure from what. But okay, so he has been hit by the warp, which means he is now primed. So if we, say, throw, we can stagger him and detonate that combo. Then, they are, I mean, I don't know if he has armor under those shields. If he does, then that means that Stasis 
does not work. If he does not have armor under those shields, then that means stasis does work. So, I mean, Liara, you, you might not be doing too much for us. Sing similarly with Singularity. So... We might just be covering him with warps non-stop. I would greatly appreciate if you would not... If you would not dodge our abilities. Like that. I think we do want to keep him as far away as possible, for the most part. Yeah, he does have a lot of shields. I mean, yes, this is not exactly the strongest of combos for enemies that have shields. Is that so now? Protecting. Protecting the council member? I'm not so sure about that. Now this would be a great instance for us to, for example, have Garrus just come in here and shoot this guy down. That'd be really nice. Or overloaded, for that matter. Real quick. Oh, yeah, that's that's one reason why we're not dealing much damage to him. Let's switch you to the Typhoon, Javik. I think that might make a very big difference. Alright. So he gets a gunship. Make sure you're in cover when this happens. Fortunately, we are right now. Tide Lang, unfortunately, will recover not all, but much of his shields when this is happening. He does have a new ability that he's unveiling now, where he can launch some energy out from his sword, like that. Well, uh, we did force him to go back to his recharging quite quickly there, fortunately. And it might actually be that shooting him while he's in this position, which usually we as Shepard would not be able to do, but I think Javik was laying down some suppressive fire. I don't think he actually got the chance to restore much of his shield, so it might just be time-based how long he does that for and not based on how many shields he actually gets back. Oh, that is. How's that working out for you, Kai Lang? How's that working out for you? Because as far as I can tell, you haven't hit any of us. There's only one way this ends. Excuse me? Rude. Target the supports. That doesn't sound good. And he's just fine. Paul Shepard is falling you off. For all your hard work. Yeah, so is he stealing all that info? It does certainly look like it. comes in here. I've waited all the hard work for him. Finally get the chance to fight him. And then he runs away. Shepard! Hang on! He just runs away. Anyone on this frequency? This is Lieutenant Kieran. My squad is trapped. 
This is Shepard. Give us your location. I repeat, is anyone on this frequency? We read you. Give me your location. 